Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, once again, thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here with you. Uh, and I want to uh, talk about the topic which um, uh, the whole project came up from the curiosity. There was a lot of talking about uh, whistleblowing, about uh, mm, WikiLeaks uh, and other stories related to that in public sphere. And you could read a lot of that about media. And I start to wondering how much we really can find for ourselves as researchers in this archives which are open sources like now easy accessible and can we find there anything interesting for us to to learn about some specific region in this specific uh, presentation about uh, Mindanao so I want to explore how much we can learn uh, from the uh, WikiLeaks projects or data on the situation in Mindanao. I don't want to s talk a lot about the methodology, but in this particular presentation, I don't want to be very deconstructive to see the different meanings behind the text. I don't want to focus on text. I want to look what this text can uh, allow us to learn about the situation in Mindanao. Of course, remembering that this is specific narratives made by professionals from the uh, United States and uh, which have the particular position in the Philippines and in, in the Mindanao. So if you type Mindanao into WikiLeaks uh, browser, then it's over uh, 5,000 uh, documents. And the uh, it is kind of library. The biggest uh, uh, section is about global intelligence files, which is not governmental uh, documents. It's, uh, those are, uh, documents are made by the Strat for uh, uh, company, and I wasn't interested in that. I focus on the uh, public library of US diplomats to learn something more about the American official or uh, not public, but official perspective on, uh, on, on the situation in the Mindanao. I also look to Kissinger cables, Carter cables, just to compare it to the situation nowadays, because this uh, public library of United States diplomacy focuses on the 21st century, exactly from the 2001 up to 2010. So I will uh, focus here on the situation in the period of uh, Bush and uh, Macapagal Arroyo administrations, yes. Um, moreover, I decided to focus only on the secret and confidential uh, um, documents available in the uh, internet, because unclassified documents are usually re media reviews. And I, you can read in media exactly the same. I thought that it might be more interesting to see what are the um, conversations of diplomats with different persons in the Philippines or Malaysia, what they, how they see the uh, situations. So generally we can find four types of documents in this library, uh, four types of secret documents or classified documents. It, it is my typology. The first of, first of all, you can find a, a in, uh, setters when some uh, officials from United States go to the Philippines or Malaysia he has special uh, basic information about the situation in this country and sometimes some su suggestions what he uh, should talk about or maybe what he shouldn't talk about in the particular uh, with the particular actors in uh, Southeast Asia reports general overviews of the situations of the ongoing situation based if it's classified it is usually based on the conversations with uh, foreign ministry officers some politicians uh, 
some conversations, yes? If it's unclassified, usually it's based on media. Updates on military activities, I will not focus on them here at all because they are quite technical about the, uh, usually in the case of Mindanao, about uh, what happened and how America can help to, to, in, the, in the situation. And some suggestions what Washington should do about particular situation. If I, no, I um, made a huge file with the all secret uh, data, uh, which are, as I said, uh, easy accessible right now, and I counted the number of words. What struck me most was the uh, how often Malaysian perspective or Malaysia, Malaysian, Malaysia's uh, words were uh, um, present in the uh, corpus of uh, text. So there is a question of validity. To which extent it is a case of um, lacks of the data, av available data, that there is more data from Malaysia per, uh, than from the Philippines, for instance, and to which extent Malaysia is really important to understand the situation in Mindanao. Because if you look just to number of words, Malaysia seems to be very, uh, uh, very uh, important. Uh, okay, from now on there is a lot of uh, quotations from the reports. If you don't like to listen to me, you can just read the, uh, ju just this. Uh, 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 reports or uh, passages from this report. So, by these uh, quotations, I wanted to uh, show that the international dimension of the situation in Mindanao was present from the very beginning. Uh, and uh, different actors were involved as Indonesia, Thailand, Singapore, United Kingdom, Australia, to be somehow indirectly involved in this situation from the very uh, beginning, from the 1973, as the uh, mm, uh, uh, Kissinger uh, cables uh, show. But let's focus on the situation at the beginning uh, of this century and at the turn of uh, 21st century. So. If you look into the re secret report for U.S. Congress, it struck that in 2000, just one year before the 9-11 uh, uh, attacks, the situation in the Mindanao from the American perspective was not important at all. They, they said, yes, however, there are some competing defense uh, priorities related to escalation of hostilities after uh, Estrada's uh, offensive against MILF. But the most important was this, what was uh, again important, Southeast China, uh, China Sea di dispute. And this report uh, shows it quite uh, clearly. But then everything changed from the American perspective after uh, September 11. And what is interesting, a lot of local actors in Southeast Asia were aware of this change. And because of that, Nur Misurari sent a clear message to Americans that I'm not terrorist. MILF done the same. They knew that it's very important to be not defined as terrorists by Americans then. Of course, uh, as we can uh, see in this example, uh, um, uh, Americans uh, learn from uh, Arroyo administration that probably we should talk to MILF. It's too big organization just to treat them as a, a, a terrorist organization and they have some legitimation. Originally, Americans wanted to put MILF on the uh, uh, foreign terrorist organization list. They ch changed it after consultation with uh, Arroyo administration and also after consultation with Malaysian government to check, to double check the situation, how 
what is the view of the uh, 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 of the Malaysian uh, officers according uh, toward this situation? If you see to the um, general report on the global war on terror in the Philippines, uh, dated 2005, we can see that this is completely different situation in the Americans' view than five years earlier. They say that only Afghanistan in the 90s had a mix of elements more conductive to spread of radical Islam movements and the uh, safeguards of uh, terrorism. There was not a problem five years ago, and then in five years they see that a huge problem, long uh, term problem, uh, bigger than anywhere in uh, uh, East Asia. Of course, there is a lot about American actions. I don't want to focus on uh, that right now. Uh, maybe I want to uh, draw your attention to the key missing link, uh, which was, according to American diplomats, the situation in the, the Filipino uh, police. Army is okay, there is a problem with police. And I could hear this uh, point even two months ago when I uh, conducted some interviews in Manila, that there is a problem with, uh, with uh, the police. After Mama Sapano, there was the same point, that there is a problem with police, they should learn something from the... Uh, they should police should cooperate with uh, foreign... Uh, countries as uh, uh, armed force of the Philippines uh, cooperate. Uh, it might be interesting for some of you, it wasn't so popular. It, it is a case where the diplomacy behind the closed door operates. The role of Saudi Arabia, which had, according to different reports, huge uh, leverage over the um, government of the Philippines due to big number of overseas uh, Filipino workers in uh, Saudi Arabia. And because of that, when any time, maybe not any time, but at least few times, the uh, Saudi ambassador asked to release some Saudi uh, uh, citizen from a Filipino uh, custody, it was done even though there was some, uh, uh, he was suspected of being funneling, uh, financing a terrorist network in the Philippines. So, United States and different countries start to pressure Saudi Arabia to st stop this practice uh, in terms to be more efficient in a fight on uh, suspected. Uh, Middlemen, but Malaysia. Of course, Malaysia is present in many of uh, um, uh, documents because of the role in this particular time when Manila was a facilitator, as they said, not mediator, uh, impartial but not neutral, uh, in the first decade of 21st uh, um, century peace process. And uh, because of that, you, the, the, there is a lot of uh, information about Malaysia positions. And also, some of those documents which uh, pop up when I take uh, Mindanao were not prepared in Manila by uh, American uh, embassy in Manila, but in Kuala Lumpur. And they come from Kuala Lumpur, yes? Mm. The interesting thing is that from uh, report to report, their perspective on the peace uh, change, on the peace negotiation change. At the beginning, uh, um, Otman Razak, who was the key uh, Manila, uh, Malaysian uh, negotiator or broker was very optimistic. Then he said, no, it is impossible to 
to to bring a piece to Mindanao to to sign the peace uh, agreement. Then again, maybe there is a chance. So right now, it's it is quite easy to uh, it is quite easy to look from the perspective that we know how it's finished. That it wasn't possible to uh, success to be successful in before 2010. Even though there were some hopes that it is possible to do it in 2007. Uh, but we all remember the situation with the um, uh, constitutional uh, uh, problem uh, and constitutionality of the uh, agreement, proposed agreement, and it was the reason why it stopped. If we look to the uh, documents, you can see uh, the growing involvement of the U.S., informal involvement of the U.S., government into peace process. At the beginning, Malaysia was kind of um, suspicious about the role of the uh, United States. However, they recognized their uh, role as someone who uh, bring resources like money to the, uh, uh, to the um, island. But they wanted to... Well, Maybe I shouldn't talk too much about that. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's, there, there were some tensions between Malaysia and the United States. But then, when Malaysia saw that the position of Gloria Mapaga uh, Arroyo is uh, weaker and weaker, they start to ask the United States to be more and more involved in the, in the uh, process. Mm. And also, we can see as uh, through the time the American perspective on MILF change. As I said at the beginning, they wanted to put, they suggested it to put in, uh, even not Washington suggested it, but uh, Manila Embassy suggested to put MILF on the foreign terror terrorist organization list. At the end, they start to meet uh, with uh, MILF officials in. Uh, Mindanao. Mm. So the whole ten years all um, was uh, summed up by one report, according to one record, as successful strategy without the final triumph, final success. Uh, so meaning without the uh, signing the agreement. But we know very carefully, and you can uh, we, we know it very well, and you can see all it also in the report that uh, reports that um, the signing the uh, agreement is not the end of peace process. Yes, it they have to sell it to all uh, actors in the re uh, region, and also they have to um, um, provide the resources to um, make it implemented. So, in conclusion, I would say that um, it is not only a matter of uh, it is not only ma matter of uh, um, uh, documents. The role of Malaysia in that first decade of the twenty-first century, and uh, we should remember that Malaysia took part in this uh, peace process, in the, especially in the first, uh, 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 first decade of 21st century. Uh, especially it was growing uh, in time, as you can see uh, the Filipino, uh, the Filipino, which is uh, light blue, it is popular in the first, uh, uh, this phrase Filipino is popular in the first uh, um, documents, the earliest documents, because they are more general. And then United States became more, uh, uh, more involved and Malaysia were more involved due, due to peace process. Of course, we all know that media is the message, meaning that diplomatic cables talks a lot about diplomacy and the role of diplomacy in, uh, in the peace process, yes? So, summing up, it might be an interesting uh, additional source to, uh, supplementary source to 
get um, personal account of actors involved in the process to get some uh, f uh, additional uh, characteristics of some other actors, but not in this conspiratorial way that there is completely different uh, way, uh, com uh, completely different uh, uh, version of his story, which is in contradiction to to history from media. It is rather history from specific uh, angle and with very with many. Uh, many small interesting uh, accounts which can somehow enrich our our knowledge on the on the situation thank you so much right well we'll follow the same uh, format i'm not sure uh, the next speaker is um rogelio braga yes right uh, but um, whilst we're shifting powerpoints anyone want to make a quick um, question? Yes, we go. I was in, I was in Australia back in 2014, 2015, where the, when the Aquino government was fighting for the Spratlys, and during that time, the consul or the embassy, someone from the embassy was saying that uh, we should help in terms of the Spratly fight, and the Saba uh, issue will take a back seat. So, did you see anything related to Malaysia and Saba? The problem is that the data uh, from uh, this uh, leak, uh, uh, which is called uh, Public uh, uh, Library of the United States Diplomacy, uh, the latest data are from 2010. So, but, <laughs> and the other thing is that they usually focus on the contemporary situation. Maybe in some case, I remember in one document there is mentioned the role of Malaysia in 1970, when they supported the uh, 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 separatist movement because of the tension on Saba, but it was just mentioned. They usually focus on the contemporary situation. Thank you.